You've got ideas, you've got ambition, you've got no time, or so you think. I'm Marissa Lonick, and I help busy moms with big dreams and no time. Join me each week as I dive into time management strategies, goal setting and achieving framework, and inspiring guests who are juggling mom life, work life, fill in the blank life. Dreams don't work unless you do, and just because you're a mom doesn't mean you can't still make it happen, whatever it means to you. Welcome to the Mama Work It podcast. Hey, hey, mamas. Welcome to another episode of the Mama Work It podcast. So glad you're here. Our guest today is Celestina Brunetti. Celestina is the owner of Wellness Cucina, a virtual cooking platform where busy families can learn how to make quick, easy, and delicious dinners on the busiest of weeknights. Celestina is a trained chef and registered dietitian who created an easy-to-implement program for busy families looking to cook at home more. Now, as we record this, we are still living in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, so I cannot imagine a better time to introduce this topic and chat more about the benefits of cooking at home, as well as some great hacks to do it easily and efficiently. Celestina, thank you so much for being here today. Of course, Marissa. I'm super excited about this. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started by just learning a little more about you. Tell us how you got started as a chef and a dietitian. So food has always been in my life. Uh, in case you couldn't tell by my name, I'm super Italian. So <laughs> I'm sure you know this too. Just food is ever present and that is most Italian grandmothers and parents love language. So yes. food has been ever present in my life and culinary school just kind of seemed like the next step for me. In some way, shape, or form, I wanted food in my life. And I was actually really bored in culinary school. So I took on, I guess the next level of it is the nutrition behind everything, right? So that like science aspect of it. So that is kind of how I learned to blend the worlds of the food that I grew up with that was lard and salt laden with lighter things uh, that you can like freshen up a dish with and completely transform it in a healthy way. Love it. Do you think you were bored because you just grew up like in the kitchen helping cook and watching your family cook and all that? That's part of the Italian culture and traditions? To some extent. um, A lot of it though was like the academic side of things. So we had culinary classes, but we also had academic classes. And I went to a college prep high school and I was bored. Like (laughs) I was really bored. (laughs) Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, what made you want to help this specific community, busy families? What made you want to really target this audience and serve this this community? So right out of culinary school, I actually started my own business where I was personal chefing for families. So I was like, this is a perfect blend of nutrition, my love for nutrition and my love for food, right? Like cooking for people. Uh, But I quickly realized that on days when I wasn't cooking for these busy families, that they were like rolling through the drive through using like uh, boxed helper meals or like calling for pizza. And I would always see it like leftovers in the refrigerator or in the trash. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, they really don't know how to cook for themselves when I don't cook for them. So that's when I kind of shifted from uh, cooking for someone to teaching them the skills that they need to be able to keep this uh, as a sustainable thing so that they're not just relying on me for healthy food, but that they can do it themselves. Yeah. You're kind of teaching them to teach themselves a little bit. Love it. So I'm a mom of four. I actually really like cooking. I enjoy it. But even still, sometimes I will say it's not easy. (laughs) Do you think it's possible for a busy family to cook at home? I 100% do. And it really breaks down to what your priorities are right? Like that's anything in life. You have to prioritize what's important to you. And if making that shift to cooking at home is important to you, your family, and the way you want to kind of develop, then yes, I do believe it is 100% possible. Okay. You're so speaking my language. Absolutely. (laughs) Prioritization for the win. So 
I'm curious, what are three things every family should have in their fridge or in their pantry to actually make this happen? Definitely. I think keeping it super, super simple, a protein, a starch, and a veggie. I know that sounds so, so, so basic, but that's all you need. And like two of those things can be in your freezer. Really all three of those things can be in your freezer, which I'll get to in a minute. But those three components can make a delicious meal in under 30 minutes, like every time. Yeah. So some proteins that I like to have on hand, um, even in the freezer, chicken breast, uh, like pork tenderloin, because those two are pretty lean and they cook up quick. Um, and even fish to have in the freezer, because that can go straight from freezer into the oven and be done in like 20 minutes. So protein wise, those are my go-tos. Okay. Interesting. I do always have fish in my freezer, but I don't cook it frozen. I always defrost it. So tell me more about that. Yeah. Just go frozen. It's literally that easy wow. out of the freezer. Like if it's, if, especially if it's skin off like salmon filet, for example, right? Take a salmon filet. Uh, if you want some extra flavor on it, combine some honey, some mustard, or if you have honey mustard already, just shellac it on for lack of a better word and pop it in a 425 degree oven for 20 minutes until it flakes apart like you normally would fish. No need to defrost it. Oh my gosh. You just blew my mind. <laughs> Throwing fish in the oven frozen. Okay. New life hack for me for sure. <laughs> so same with like veggies, right? So keep veggies in your freezer or buy frozen veggies. And that's something that can also cook up in like 20 to 25 minutes. Frozen broccoli is a go-to in my house because my husband's obsessed with it for some reason, but it also makes dinner hit the table so much faster than having to like cut veggies from scratch because real talk guys, like that's the hardest part, right? Like the actual prep work of it. So if you can cut that out and either buy veggies that are pre-cut because sometimes they have those available in the produce section you'll pay a little bit more but it's going to save you a ton of time or just buy them frozen and they'll last forever until you need them and that's something that you can literally just put on a sheet tray in a 425 degree oven and let them go I do do that. I do buy the pre-cut veggies often and I never used to, but it is a huge time saver. Absolutely. I agree. Because we always have a vegetable with dinner. That's like a religious rule in this house. So it has helped tremendously to do that. But I don't typically do frozen. So I might have to try that. That might be an additional good good tip. Definitely. And I feel like there are a lot of stores out there. I'm not going to name stores since they're not necessarily a uh partners of this podcast, although they probably should be, uh, there are stores out there that have veggies, like a variety of different veggies so that you're not just eating frozen broccoli or frozen carrots. Like you can get a variety of different veggies and like they may have curry powder on them already. Cool. Awesome. One less step. Um, but if you are just getting plain veggies from your local store, cool. Just pop them in the oven without anything on them. And then when they're done roasting, when they get that like nice golden, like brown color, just drizzle them with some olive oil, salt, pepper if you want to. And then that, at that point, you can add different flavors to it. So add different herbs, different spices. Um, and a tip that I like to use for herbs and spices is smell your herbs and spices together. So literally like take two or three containers, sniff them all together. And if they smell good together, they're going to taste good together. Hmm, that's a great tip. I never thought to do that. Do you have any yeah. favorite herbs and spices that are like staples in your cabinet? Oh, 100%. Cuban, coriander, and ginger are like my go-tos, either Asian or Mexican. And both of those, like all of those flavors go really well with like Asian cuisine or Mexican cuisine. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And if you are using frozen veggies, you can finish it with like lemon zest on, um, on the end. So it'll be a lot more refreshing and a lot brighter. So it won't taste like it was frozen. Okay. I'm learning so much from this chat conversation. I'm so excited. I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to ask a personal question. Do you cook from scratch every night? I would say like 75% of the time, I do. Truthfully, when I was personal chefing, I didn't because I was cooking for other people all day. And the last thing that I wanted to do was come home and cook. Of course. So that was a lot of frozen pizza, to be completely honest, <laughs> uh, or just like going out to eat when restaurants were open. But now I would say, so I recently moved to, um, to Germany probably like five months ago now, six months ago. And 
we've been shut down for like three or four months, but I've also regained my love for cooking because I don't have to do it every day. So I actually enjoy cooking. So within the last couple of months, I made fresh pasta like seven or eight times and I haven't done that in two years. So I think, yeah, I'm finding my love for it again. So I am cooking for myself more, but still I would say like 75% of the time. I mean, I definitely have frozen pizza in my freezer right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we all have those nights where we just, we can't do it and that's okay. Right. All right. Do you believe in following recipes or do you think being more off the cuff is the way to go when it comes to cooking? Definitely. So I think with baking, yes, 100% follow a recipe because I've tried making cookies without a recipe before and they were disgusting. <laughs> so <laughs> with baking, 100%. Uh, with cooking, I think if you understand the skill set behind what you're doing, like for example, the skill set behind making a soup or the skill set behind roasting a protein. If you understand that, you can cook anything. So you can look at an ins uh, you can look at a recipe for inspiration, but you don't necessarily need to follow that recipe to the T to make food quick, easy, and delicious. Okay, great. All right, jumping over to another topic real quick. Do you or should you meal plan? And what are your best tips for meal planning? I think it really breaks down to what the family needs, right? Like if you are super busy every day of the week and you don't even have 30 minutes after you get home from work or you stop teleworking to your kid's bedtime, yes, I think you should meal plan because that's going to remind you that you have food ready in the fridge, like nutritious, delicious food in the fridge rather than opting for like a drive through ordering in or choosing something out of your freezer. Those are okay sometimes, right? But like that shouldn't be your every day all the time. So yes, if your life is just super hectic during the week, yes, I highly recommend that you take some time and meal plan. However, meal planning doesn't have to mean eating the same thing every day. It also doesn't have to mean that you make uh, everything in a crock pot and everything you eat that week is mushy. Um, it really breaks down to what I was explaining earlier, the protein, the veggie, and a grain. If you have those three items, you can really do anything and have a variety of different foods that you're kind of mixing and matching throughout the week. So like I said earlier, right? You're, you have the chicken, you have the pork tenderloin, you have the salmon. Cook all of those off in a 425 degree oven, maybe on different trays, but you can put them all in there at the same time. So they're all cooking at the same time. Um, if you are meal planning though, undercook them a little bit because then when you reheat them, they'll be perfect. Um, same with the veggies. Choose like three to four different kinds of veggies so that you have a variety of different veggies for the week. And maybe you start the week off with a salad so that you are using some of those fresh vegetables earlier in the week. And then lastly, you want to end up with grains. I always recommend cooking a bunch of grains ahead of time, like rice, quinoa, farro, whatever you have accessibility to. Um, this can also mean like butternut squash, which comes frozen. Um, it also comes fresh, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to whack in half, you know? Um, <laughs> if you can get it pre-cut. Yes. I've, I've had a lot of challenging times doing that myself. <laughs> yeah. The key is a really sharp knife, um, but it also comes pre-cut. So like you never actually have to do that. But if you have three of those cooked off ahead of time, you can mix and match everything throughout the week, which is really cool. So that's the kind of meal planning, quote unquote, that I like to recommend to my clients and people who are trying to get into meal planning because it's a lot more versatile than just eating the same boring thing every day. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have like this mix and match ability. I like that too, because I find in the past, if I've meal planned too rigidly, where like, you know, on Monday, we're going to have this on Tuesday, we're going to have this. It never works out in my house. It's just kind of like someone either doesn't want to eat that one day or, you know, gosh, whatever reason comes up. But yeah, I find that that doesn't work well. So I have like a loose meal plan that I think about, you know, maybe like these are the five, six things I'm kind of planning on making for the week. Um, and I base my grocery list around that. And then depending on how we're feeling that day or what the schedule's like, how much time we have to dedicate toward cooking, we'll kind of adjust accordingly. And that works pretty well here, but totally. And I, I, like I said, it's really a family by family basis. So 
figure out what's going to be best for you, your family, and the amount of time that you have. And guys, if you have kids that are old enough and old enough, I mean like five or older, teach them some skills so that they can actually help you in the kitchen. Because if you're doing this with your family, you're going to feel less guilty about spending time cooking and not spending time with your family because you are spending time with your family. You're just doing a different activity. Yeah. Marry the two worlds. Absolutely. I agree. Definitely. Okay. Speaking of kids, what about picky eaters? Any tips? Like I have a son who won't eat cheese. I can't even believe it because I'm like the biggest (laughs) cheese lover out there. Um, But I know a lot of moms who struggle with kids, maybe who won't eat vegetables or something like that. And that can be really challenging. What tips do you have? Definitely. Uh, I like empowerment. So giving two options um, and then allowing your child to choose between those two options. So for example, let's go to veggies, right? Like broccoli or carrots. Those are two things they may or may not like, but if you just lay it out for them, like, hey, these are your two options. And if you give them the choice, they're going to be a lot more apt to be at least a little bit more open to trying something like that. So empowerment is number one. Two, cook things differently. So don't just give your child a raw carrot or don't just give your child raw broccoli because it may not be appealing in its raw form. Try it steamed, try it sauteed, try it roasted, like try a lot of different ways to get them to eat these veggies. And I know it's time consuming. I understand. And I get how frustrating it can be because it it really is. You feel like a failure when you're just like giving the same thing over and over again and they're not eating it. But continued repetition is really important. And if you feel like you're wasting food, just give one bite on the plate. It doesn't need to be a whole serving of it. But if you offer one bite, And you encourage them to maybe just touch it at first, maybe then touch it to their lip, and then maybe maybe put it in their mouths at some point, uh, a couple of exposures down. They don't even have to swallow it at that point. Like they can spit it out. But just getting that, getting taking those small baby steps to really encouraging them to eat this different food. um, Those are some of my go-to ways to do it. For your son and cheese, is it any specific kind of cheese or just all of the cheeses? (laughs) Oh, it's all cheese. I mean, he'll eat pizza with cheese and some some foods that have cheese on them, but he's really a cheese hater. I don't know what happened. He used to like <laughs> cheese. I hope this is a phase for his sake. <laughs> and honestly, sometimes it is, but there are so many other foods out there that are also going to give him that protein and fat content that I wouldn't be too crazy worried about it. But um, yeah, I think if he sees you and your husband and the rest of your family like really amping it up, and like enjoying cheese. Is he one of the older ones or one of the younger ones? He's one of the older ones. Hmm. I was going to say if he was one of the younger ones, like have the older ones like really encourage it. But I mean, I feel like you and your husband can probably continue to really encourage it. Show them that you're enjoying it. Uh, Maybe try different kinds of cheeses. Maybe he is a stinky cheese liker and doesn't like the like non-stinky cheeses. I don't know. Explore. There's so (laughs) many different kinds out there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see. I don't know. For now, we're just rolling with it. That's fair. <laughs> making, making portions without cheese for him whenever we use it. Okay. Fair. So tell us a little bit more about your course. You have a course on, you know, for busy families with regards to cooking at home and kind of making that simpler and able. So tell us more about that. Definitely. So my goal is to give busy families some guidance on one, where to start with all of this, because there's so much information out there, right? Like there are so many people saying, I can help you cook easy meals. But like what it really breaks down to, as I mentioned earlier, is understanding the skill set behind that meal. So with my course, it's basically like a miniature version of culinary school, but super simplified so that a busy parent can easily implement what they're learning into their daily routines. And then over time, it just becomes your normal way of cooking for your family and exploring different flavors together. So we really focus on understanding the skill set behind cooking and uh, exploring the kitchen with your family, in addition to working on your family's mindset around food, especially for those picky eaters. And when you are going from kind of a more processed lifestyle to a more Uh, like Whole Foods accepting lifestyle, it can be challenging. So we work through all of that together over the course of a 12-week period. Amazing. Amazing. That's so great. I mean, 
so many great things to learn, not just in theories and recipes, but also just equipment and mindset, like you said. So really great investment for busy families who want to prioritize cooking at home, for sure. Most definitely. And a lot of a lot of the families that I work with, like they were eating out at fast food restaurants for, I don't know, like three or four times a week. And I was speaking to a family that I had worked with uh, probably about eight or nine months ago, and they don't recall the last time that they ate out. Wow. Now that they have these skills, like could not remember. So it really is cool. The transformation you can see when you understand how simple some of these cooking tactics can be and how quickly you can actually put a meal on the table. Wow. What a shift to go from three to four times a week to not remembering. That's incredible. And I'm sure what a money yeah. savings as well to be able to oh, yeah. you know, cook at home and not be eating out at restaurants all the time. Incredible. Definitely. And I mean, even with fast food, I'm sure that adds up too for a family of four or more, you know? Yeah, it does. <laughs> We're a larger <laughs> family, so I can tell you that. Okay. Yeah. So why do you think eating together at home is such an important element for families? I mean, there's obviously the health reason, but what are some other benefits to this? Especially at a younger age. So if you have like three or four-year-olds where you think that they may not be understanding the conversation, they're actually absorbing everything, right? So if they are at school, I mean, maybe not so much now during COVID times, but like when they are at school, they're only interacting with their peers. So they're having conversations at kind of a, a lower level, right? Like it's their age. Whereas if they have conversations with their family, they may have older siblings or they may have, um, well, they'll definitely have parents or maybe even grandparents there. The conversation is different. So they're going to see how adults interact with each other and what their conversations are like. So that's really where they have an understanding of the conversational dynamic. And that's how their vocabulary can grow and expand. And as time progresses, it's actually been seen uh, through many studies that their schooling is better when they have meals together with family. They, they just happen to be doing better in school. Um, they have more confidence in school. And it also gives parents a really good time to, to understand what's happening in their child's life, right? So if you have that time for interaction, you can ask, how is your day? Your child may not answer fully, but I actually have a blog post about this that we can link to if yeah. you'd like. Just some more conversations that you can have that go a little bit further in depth um, rather than just, how is your day, right? Like you can look at highs, lows, um, I think it's called a rose, a thorn, and something else that you're like looking forward to the next day. So this is just a great time to engage. And I think that's why it's so important. Yeah, I agree. We do prioritize eating dinner together as a family, I would say almost every night. And also for the moms who are struggling with getting their kids to actually eat dinner, because that is, you know, can be a problem as well. I find that when we're kind of deep in conversation at the table, they're eating without even kind of realizing it. And that's another added benefit that I really like to think of it too. It's like, it's not so forceful, like you're forcing them to eat dinner, you're begging, you're pleading, or you're using the TV as a tool, you know, but I think when you're in these conversations, they're, you know, they're, you're slipping bites in their mouth or they're doing it without even realizing it. And that's, <laughs> that's another great win just from having these family dinners. So Most definitely. And if your kid isn't eating at dinner, they may have a snack time too close to dinner where they're actually not hungry. So that might be something to look at as well if that is a challenge that you may be facing. Good point. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Okay, Celestina, I want to move on to our lightning round where I'm going to ask you some random, just for fun type questions so our listeners can get to know you a little more on a personal level. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. My first question is, what's your go-to get shit done song? But I want to kind of rephrase it for you. What is the song you listen to in the kitchen when you're cooking that motivates you? My go-to song is Unbelievers, uh, and I believe that's by Vampire Weekend, and it just pumps me up. Ooh, I have to check that out. <laughs> the way you're talking about it sounds really motivating, so. <laughs> Girl, just it's the bass line. just pumps me up. <laughs> awesome. Okay, good. What's your guilty pleasure TV show? 
so many. Um, New Girl, I've watched it probably seven or eight times full through. Oh, wow. It must be pretty good then. Cool. Okay. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Calories don't count. Pizza hands down. No question. (laughs) I'm a big pizza fan too. I hear ya. And you can really diversify it. It's just such a great food. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Neapolitan, New York. So many choices. (laughs) Yeah. Agree. Agree. What's your cocktail of choice? Uh, That is a French 75. I do not know what a French 75 is. Gin, lemon, uh, a little bit of simple syrup, and then you top off the, the glass with champagne. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it sounds magical for sure. And finally, what is one app you cannot live without? Instagram. Got it. Yeah, it is pretty addicting. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, Celestina, for being on the Mama Work It podcast show today. Before we head out, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Definitely. Uh, I am most active on Instagram and my handle is at save time cooking. I give like daily tips. So be sure to check me out there. And my website is wellnesscucinallc.com. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Celestina. Thanks for being on the show. Loved having you and loved learning all these great tips for busy families hoping to cook more at home. Of course. It was a pleasure, Marissa. You've been listening to the Mama Work It podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and would love if you could take a quick minute to leave me a review on whichever platform you're listening from and maybe even send a note to a fellow mama friend recommending it. Reviews and recs help this podcast grow and reach more like-minded, awesome moms. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that button so we can stay in touch, girl. By the way, If you haven't checked out the Mama Work It website, please do. There are lots of free resources and great articles there that can help you with the juggle of work life, mom life, wife life, fill in the blank life. So head on over. Thanks again for being part of the tribe. I'll see you soon. But in the meantime, keep on working it, mama.